Remember a few years ago when we all discovered that Mitt Romney had an alter ego? Senator Romney, we learned, went by a pseudonym, Pierre Delecto. And as Pierre Delecto, Romney liked and replied to tweets from journalists and from some of his colleagues in Congress. Okay. Well, it turns out there's another politician in Washington with a nom de plume. This time, it's President Biden, whose pseudonym is Robert L. Peters. And as Robert L. Peters, President Biden emailed Hunter Biden's crooked business associates and scheduled secret phone calls with the president of Ukraine while running U.S. policy on the Eastern European nation. A little bit different. Very different uses of pseudonyms. The House Committee on Oversight and Accountability has uncovered Biden's secret identity, which appears to have been a little bit more focused and a little bit more lucrative than Mitt Romney's silly burner account. The committee has actually uncovered that Biden used multiple pseudonymous accounts to secretly conduct business with his son and foreign powers while he was vice president. Those other pseudonyms include Robin Ware, J.R.B. Ware, and who knows how many others. This fact might explain why Joe Biden struggles these days to remember his own name. He has so many of them, it's difficult to keep track. Also might explain why Joe Biden managed to forget and deny all of the times that we now know he heard about, participated in, and apparently profited immensely from all those crooked business deals. It wasn't him after all. It was Robert L. Peters. But something tells me, despite the committee's request for more records, that the executive agencies are going to continue to stonewall. They're not going to go after Joe Biden or Robert Peters or Robin Ware or any other Biden persona. They're not going to go after the current president for being a crook. They're too busy prosecuting the former president for opposing him. Right now, go to helixsleep.com slash Knowles. With everything going on in the world right now, you could really use a good night's sleep. That is why you need to check out Helix Mattress. Helix has harnessed years of extensive mattress expertise to bring their customers a truly elevated sleep experience. They just launched their new Helix Elite. The Helix Elite collection includes six different mattress models, each tailored for specific sleep positions and firmness preferences. I've had my Helix for years now. I absolutely love it. Night after night, I sleep like a sweet, delicate little child. I want the same for you. Helix has a sleep quiz that matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? Get out of my mattress. I'm a married man. Go to helixsleep.com slash Knowles. Take their two-minute sleep quiz to find the perfect mattress for your body and sleep type. Their flexible payment plans make it so that a great night's sleep is never far away. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Hurry over to helixsleep.com slash Knowles. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Hello, Michael. Big fan. I just watched your interview with Tracy Shannon, and while I can't help but feel terrible for what happened to her and her children, there were a couple things in there that really did not sit right with me. Tracy refers to being asked by her husband to do some unusual things in the bedroom as, quote, sexual abuse and coercion. To me, this is an extremely grave false accusation. This smacks of the Me Too movement, and I was hoping you would push back on this claim a little bit more. As a conservative movement, I hope we can distinguish going forward between a false belief that upends your entire life and causes you to not be able to fulfill your duties to your children and a bizarre sexual fetish that is kept relatively within its proper place inside the bedroom. This obviously was not kept to the bedroom, but speaking as a Catholic who himself struggles with some pretty severe fetishism, I'm very thankful that my own is not the kind that will compel me to grievously hurt others or to upend my own life, but there but for the grace of God go I. I know your advice to me might be simply knock it off and be normal, but as you know, this is much easier said than done. I hope that, God willing, if I ever were to get married and gathered the courage to explain my desires to my wife and to open up to her about them, that she would be receptive or at least understanding and patient with me, not threaten me with divorce or accuse me of something tantamount to rape like Tracy Shannon did. Am I being too harsh on her here? Please let me know your thoughts, Michael. Thanks. You are. You are being too harsh. And it's a very good question, but, you, but you're wrong. <laughs> and, and 
you're wrong in the way that unmarried guys are wrong. Because you're saying, look, I've got all these bizarre sexual desires, and I just hope that my wife accommodates them someday. That is not the Catholic view of sex. The Catholic view of sex is that sex has a purpose, okay? And the purpose is not just to indulge whatever fantasies you have. Even if you say, well, they're, they're not violent fantasies, they're just some other kind of fantasy. R- right, even that, not a great idea. The other, the other reason you're wrong here is because you are viewing desire at, in, in the way that Freud might view desire, which is that you got to blow off a little steam. And if you don't indulge some of these desires, then they're going to totally warp your mind and go, go out of control. That's very different from the Aristotelian view of desire, which is that it, it's a habit. And so you cultivate habits. And the more you indulge, say, these sexual fetishes and desires that you have, it, that's not going to alleviate those desires. It's going to exacerbate them. It's going to make it worse, actually. So the best thing that you can do is try to tamp them down a little bit. And obviously, in a way that is prudent, uh, you ought to try to turn your desire. It's a fallen world and we're subject to concupiscence, so it's probably not going to totally work. But you, you should try to turn your desire toward that which is properly ordered. And, and you will find, this is not just a sex thing, this is true of all disordered desires, you will find that those disorder, disordered desires abate, at least to some degree. Uh, if, as you say, you struggle with these desires now, I don't know, I'm not accusing you of looking at pornography or anything like that, or even fantasizing, but don't forget, even the willful entertainment of, of disordered and uh, impure and unchaste thoughts and desires, even that is a sin if you do it willfully. And so you should really work on that because the basic reason is because sex is not about just you and fulfilling your pleasure. Sex is about the other person, your spouse, one hopes, and uh, about fully giving of yourself to the other person, not merely, you know, titillating yourself. And, and doing that in such a way that the love between you two becomes so real that it creates another person. Okay. Next question. I, uh, to put a button on that. Hello, Michael. Then. Hold on. Pause that question. To put a button on that. Uh, no, no husband or wife has the right to the indulgence of, of of some disordered sexual desire by his spouse or her husband uh, f- for the purpose of, of pure pleasure. I mean, that, that's a very modern view of sex. It's not a, not a Christian view of sex. Next question. Hello, Michael. This is Brian coming to you from a village named after a word derived from the Native American language, meaning mud turtle. Mm. You mentioned in the past you would like to have a deeper cigar discussion on your program. I do need your cigar expertise. What is your protocol after you have enjoyed a fine cigar and a delicious beverage and you want to have some romance with sweet little Lise and you go up to her and she says, Mark, get away from me with that filthy cigar breath. My question to you is, when I would like to get fresh with the bride of my youth after enjoying a Monte Cristo White Series and a delicious beverage, what can I do to prevent from hearing, Brian, get away from me with that filthy cigar breath. I appreciate all you do. Continue being the light. Anytime you're blowing through the Windy City, let me know. We can have a chat over at Monte Cristo. Take care. Bye. A beautifully stated question. You have the cigar afterward. That's, that's the real answer. You know, uh, you're the head of your household. You call the shots, ultimately. But prudence is an important... We keep, prudence keeps coming up today. Prudence is an important virtue, and the prudent thing to do is... You save the cigar for the end of the night. Boy, what a great clip that was. Now make sure you ring the bell, subscribe to The Michael Knowles Show. We'll see you next time.